What's up fasting fam? Welcome back to episode two of And That's a Fact, the series I decided to make answering your guys' frequently asked questions. The purpose of these videos is of course to answer your guys' most frequently asked questions that you send me on my Instagram account and I just kind of go down the list and answer them. So if you guys have any others that I do not cover, please feel free to send me a message or comment on any of my pictures. I do scroll through them and try to look for questions because I do get a lot of them. So I'm trying to do my best to answer them all within these videos for you guys basically. If you haven't already, please feel free to check out episode one of my frequently asked questions video. I cover what is intermittent fasting, if I ate up to 500 calories on my fasting days, if I've ever plateaued, how I handle social events and the holidays, and a couple other questions that you guys have asked me. So without further ado, let's jump into the first question that I have from you guys for this episode. Number one, how long did it take for me to tell my family and friends that I was doing intermittent fasting? I told them right out. As soon as I started, I let them know what was happening, mostly because I wanted them to know that there were certain things that I wasn't going to be able to do now that I had officially started intermittent fasting. That would include social events, um, going out every weekend with my friends, things like that where it's like, guys, I'm starting to do this healthier lifestyle for myself and because of that there will be times that if you guys go out, I'm not going to be able to eat or I won't be eating with you, but I will of course come basically in other words. Um, a of course people were a little bit concerned at first because whenever I first started intermittent fasting it was not very well known yet. Not a lot of people had been doing it so there were concerns as to if it was healthy or not. The best thing that you can do about a situation like that is whenever people start questioning you if it's healthy, if it's safe, is to have those answers ready. A lot of people are going to question if it is and you have to be able to confidently answer that you are safe in what you are doing with intermittent fasting. So I did tell my friends and family right whenever I started that I was doing intermittent fasting. Of course, like I said, there were some of those naysayers, but eventually when they saw that it was working for me, they really started supporting me. The second question I'm gonna answer for you guys is how often did you weigh yourself and how much were you losing? I weighed myself once a month, usually on the 5th of every month, which was the anniversary of the day that I started intermittent fasting. The reason I did this was because I knew that if I consistently stood on the scale or jumped on the scale every day or every week and I saw it fluctuate, then I would have given up a long time ago. I had become obsessed with a scale, so I found that the easiest way for me to continue on my journey was to weigh myself once, write down my weight, and put it away for the rest of the month and not monitor what I was and was not losing. I really think that this is a big contributor as to why I continued doing intermittent fasting because I wasn't watching my weight fluctuate and feel like I was failing if it was higher one day or lower the next or whatever it might have been. Now how much was I losing per month? That also fluctuated. My first month of intermittent fasting I lost 16 pounds. The next month I lost 9. The month after that it was 12 and then it was 8 or whatever it was. I can't remember that was so long ago. But it changed every month. There was not a set amount of weight that I lost. My weight loss really fluctuated so much every month that there isn't a set number that I can tell you guys that I lost per month. However, it was over five pounds every month. By the end of the year, after one year of intermittent fasting, I had lost 98 pounds, which I believe is an average of eight pounds a month, which is, I would say, pretty decent. <laughs> Another question that I have surfaced quite frequently on my social media accounts is, do you take supplements? Do you do anything for electrolytes? Do you take Himalayan salt? And the answer is, I don't do anything for electrolytes and I don't do any Himalayan salt. But I do take this product by Love Wellness called Bye Bye Bloat. You guys might have heard me talk about it on my vlogs. Looks like this. And you can get them at Ulta. Um, it's a really good digestive enzyme that I love taking before bed on my eat days. It kind of helps me feel less bloated on my fasting days. I also take this probiotic called Gurgle Probiotic. And then in the morning, whenever I wake up, I take Metabola, which helps boost your metabolism and cure hunger pains. I really like this one. It's a new one that I've been taking recently. But these are the only supplements that I do take. Like I said, I don't do any Himalayan salts. I don't take any iron tablets or daily vitamins or anything like that, mostly because if I decide to take them on a fasting day without food, I get nauseous and sick. So I like taking these because I have not had any nausea from these supplements. Plus they work for me and they're really good at reducing bloat whenever I feel like I might have eaten too much the day before, which... Let's be honest, pizza's delicious. This literally says on the back of the bottle, pizza bloat, we got you. So, you know, that's one of my favorite supplements. <laughs> this is actually a new question for me that I've had pop up recently, um, but what about bored hunger? How do you conquer bored hunger? 
I'll be honest with you guys, I am one bored hunger queen. Like, I have a sedentary job where I sit in front of a computer all day and I get those bored hunger pangs. I know the pain. I know the struggle of getting through those days when you just want to eat a candy bar. <laughs> and honestly, the best thing that I could tell you guys to get through those bored hunger pains are to stay distracted, put in a podcast, put on some music, drink lots of water, fill yourself up with fluids, especially on those fasting days because that is how I tend to get through my bored hunger pains. Honestly, you're not as hungry as you think you are. Your body clock is just telling you that it's either time to eat or your mind is playing tricks on you, but in all honesty, you're not as hungry as you think that you are. Usually those hunger pains pass between five to 15 minutes if you fill yourself up with fluids, if you distract yourself with something. One of the biggest things I like to do is go for a walk downstairs in our work gym, um, drink water, Stay distracted. That's really the biggest tip that I can tell you guys whenever it comes to those boredom hunger pains. The last question I'm going to answer for you today is one that I try to avoid as much as possible because I know how it makes me feel. But are you able to drink when you're doing intermittent alternate day fasting? That means consuming alcoholic beverages. Now, of course, I'm 26 years old. I do enjoy my glass of wine every once in a while. We do go out and have social events with our friends and family. So I do drink, but on those days that I drink, I make sure to count those calories into my calorie counter. Whenever I first started intermittent fasting, I wasn't counting those calories in, but now that I'm more health conscious, I make sure that I do count those calories in. I am fortunate that I am in the dawn of the sparkling seltzers, like Trulies and White Claws and whatever else there is out there now because those are lower in calorie and lower in carb. Now, if you watched my last Frequently Asked Questions video, you'll realize that I said that there was a month that I plateaued. That was a month that we had parties every single weekend. I was not counting in drinking into my calories. I didn't lose anything that month. But the next month, after cutting out alcoholic beverages, I lost 12 pounds. So, yes, you can drink when you're doing intermittent alternate day fasting. But I highly suggest that you count those calories into your calorie counter for the day. Alrighty guys, with all that being said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's questions and answers video. I know it was kind of random all over the place. I have a ton more coming out for you guys. Like I said, please feel free to send them to my Instagram account, comment on my pictures, any questions that you might have, and I'll make sure to get them out in a video for you guys shortly. I wanna post these at least once a month for you guys. So please make sure that you thumbs up this video for me so I know that you guys are enjoying them. Like I said, drop those questions in my inbox on Instagram. And thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you stopping by and watching episode two. I wouldn't be here without you, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.